This was the scene in Queens nearly 10 years ago after Superstorm Sandy wiped out the Rockaway boardwalk and homes all along the coast. It was one of the worst natural disasters ever to hit the Diocese of Brooklyn. And right after the winds died down, people across the city and country rallied to help the victims. That included Catholic Charities Brooklyn and Queens, which jumped into action even before the storm hit. Days worth of meals were delivered to the homebound and 24-hour residences. After the storm, the charity set up recovery sites where food, water, clothes, and cleaning supplies were handed out. And Catholic Charities has also been there for the long term. Under the leadership of Bishop Emeritus Nicholas DiMarzio, a $2 million Hurricane Sandy Relief and Recovery Fund was created. Bishop DiMarzio joins us now to talk more about the response after the storm. Bishop, it's nice to have you here. Good to be here. So, Bishop, you saw that devastation firsthand. Yes. Um, tell us about it. What was going through your mind when you were touring that? Well, it's a little bit hard to comprehend. I mean, you, you see disasters on TV. But well, now this is in your backyard. So it was a big difference uh, to see uh, our churches that had visited all of them. You know, by that time, it was there eight years already. And some of them were really hard hit. Uh, the most difficult thing was probably our finding our priest because they had to evacuate most of them. And we didn't know where they went. And we didn't have everybody's personal cell numbers. So we were searching for people for the first few days. It was, a, it, it was a difficult time uh, to, to live through, but uh, we learned a lot of lessons, I think, too. Yeah, I was going to say that. And, you know, Breezy Point in particular yeah, took a really beating bad. from the storm. You know, we were just talking about it, the wind causing the fire to go from one home to the next, mm -hmm. flooding so the firefighters couldn't get there to put out the fires. But there was a statue of the Blessed Mother that was in front of a home that was burned down. Here's the yeah. picture here. It's an iconic yeah. picture. Right. All of that devastation behind it. And the statue survived. What went yeah. through your mind when you saw that? Well, I did see it in place mm -hmm. because I was there the day after. Wow. And I could say, well, Our Lady was maybe protecting this area. At least there wasn't a great loss of life, thank God. You know, a few people, but uh, not, not what it could have been worse. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Well, I want to take a look at the response from the diocese um, in the weeks after the storm. Under your leadership, CCBQ had over 1,200 volunteers working 35,000 hours to help thousands in need. For the long term, you created a $2 million Hurricane Sandy Relief and Recovery Fund. How did you know where to even begin with the relief efforts? It affected everybody, the poor and the rich. Uh, the area is very diverse. The whole coast area is, I guess, about 12 to 14 parishes. Actually, 16 are all along the coast there, so we're very vulnerable. So we set up the relief centers where people could get food, they could get clothing, other things that they needed. Uh, we had social workers working uh, with them. Some people really were uh, disoriented. They needed a lot more help. So it, it was a variety of things that happened. So we really mobilized between Catholic Charities, uh, St. Vincent de Paul Society, everybody really pitched in uh, to, to do what was needed. It was emergency aid but that was really, very necessary. And still now, 10 years later, some people are still going through that recovery process. Sure. How has the diocese continued the relief efforts to this day? Well, you know, some people, again, have not been able to rebuild, especially in Breezy where the houses were destroyed. The parishes are really the first line of defense. The parish church is where people, and the rubber hits the road, where they really know the people, where they can get the kind of help they do. And Breezy is a place where there's continually okay. issues that, that come up that, uh, that the parish helps with and other parishes in the same way. Now we're still seeing one devastating storm after the other. Mm -hmm. What is some advice you can give to a diocese that may be going through this right now? Well, learn the lessons you, you learn by the disaster. So we did have a disaster plan in place. Uh, not everybody knew about it. Now we need to, to get people aware of it. That was the whole thing. We did another disaster plan afterwards, but I still think we still have to get people aware that there is something to, to, to rely upon. There's advice. There's uh, emergency actions that you should take. The other thing that we learned is that we really can't have anything in, in these flood areas on the, on the ground level. They have to be raised up. The heating systems, yeah. the air conditioning, the hot water heaters, everything has to go above ground. Yeah. So elevated. hopefully that you're not going to get inundated. Mm -hmm. 
So all of that is lessons learned and should be kept. And hopefully we don't have a massive storm like that ever yeah, again. again. It's right? 100 years. But yeah, who <laughs> another knows? 100. Yep. Yeah. Bishop Emeritus Nicholas DiMarzio, thanks so much for being Good here. Good to be here with you. Take care. Bishop DiMarzio will speak more on Superstorm Sandy in next week's tablet. Our reporters are working hard right now to provide a full look back on the decades since the devastation. What was accomplished and what still needs to be done? You can keep up with all of that extensive coverage on the days leading up to the anniversary on the tablet.org. Hi, I'm Christine Persichetti, anchor of Currents News. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button on this video. And if you want to see more content just like it, subscribe and click on the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching because we are putting your faith in the news.